Okay, so um, I'm sure I don't have to remind everyone about the uh, need for late latency targeting therapy. We know that CART doesn't suppress viral uh, plasma viremia and that there are reservoirs of latently infected cells that persist and that interruption or discontinuation of CART leads to rebound viremia. There are lots of uh, mechanisms by which uh, HIV genes are suppressed in, in lately infected cells, and here is the, the main uh, reservoir that we know the most about, the resting memory C, uh, T cell, CD4 T cell reservoir, in which you can see that there are, I can find the pointer, um, that there are, sorry, that there are cellular factors that impact on uh, limiting transcriptional activators. There are viral factors that, such as the site of integration, uh, transcriptional interference that I'll go into a, a bit more in a minute, um, acetylation, methylation that we've heard about in this meeting already. Um, there are ho uh, HIV host specific factors such as um, microRNAs, impaired RNA, export from the nucleus. And central to a lot of these processes is the HIV TAT protein, the transactivator of transcription that's involved uh, in other functions apart from RNA transcription that impact on the status of a latent infected cell. And we know that in the with low levels of uh, TAT, um, uh, latency can be uh, continued, whereas if you provide sufficient TAT to the cell, um, we can um, change that into a productively infected cell. Uh, one of the major mechanisms of um, the establishment and or maintenance of a latent infection is transcriptional interference. Um, and if the promoter, if the HIV is integrated into a, a gene in the same orientation as, as that gene, then you can get what's called promoter occlusion with the strong upstream cellular promoter. We know that these, that HIV is generally uh, integrated into transcriptionally active genes. The strong upstream cellular promoter can prevent uh, binding of pole, pole 2 to the HIV promoter and therefore present, prevent transcription. Um, similarly, if you have um, the genes in the HIV in opposite orientation to the gene, you can still get um, a mechanism of, of a collision of the pole two, uh, the two pole twos, and again prevention of transcription. Uh, the central hypothesis that our lab has been working on is that um, antiretroviral therapy selects proviruses integrated into the introns of transcriptionally active genes. And in those genes, we can get the read-through transcription that includes HIV RNA, and I'll explain why we think this is important. Um, in the first part of this figure, you can see how HIV is normally uh, integrated into a, the intron of a transcriptionally active gene. Um, this would normally lead to um, the LTR promoter being overpowered by the upstream promoter. And so what would normally happen in this sort of situation is that the uh, proviral viral RNA the, in the pre mRNA would be simply spliced out. But we believe because there's so many of these um, RNA splice control elements that are also part of essential parts of uh, HIV uh, replication, that in some cases we can get uh, splicing between cellular exons and different parts of the HIV um, RNA, especially at the A3 site, which encodes for the uh, TAT protein. Sorry. Um, and this would lead to these chimeric messages that include cellular exons, TAT exons, and in this situation uh, where even, even if uh, TAT isn't produced in the normal way from the HIV LTR, we, we can get transcription through, sorry, translation through an iris mechanism. So what we've done is model this system using um, here uh, a model system with uh, human growth hormone and TAT exons, both coding exons of TAT, in a situation where this, the only way that TAT can be translated from here is to um, is from an iris-like mechanism, and compared 
that to a normal cap dependent uh, translation system and you can see that even even though the level is lower it is still quite a healthy level of trans translation from um, this system uh, compared with the, the very strong CMV driven um, cap dependent mechanism something of the order of, we consistently find something of the order of 15 to 20 percent so we've gone on to have a look at models of, late, of latency. This, this is the ACH2 cell line, um, and we know where the integration site is in this cell line, so we can target this specifically using primers to cellular exons and then regions within um, HIV to look for presence of these chimeric uh, messages. And we clearly find read-through transcription from um, the exon, the cellular exon, into the LTR and even further into the GAG. Uh, but we also find evidence of splicing taking place between um, the cellular exons and the TAT region. Um, we've gone on to look at another cell line, the JLAT 6.3 cells. Um, and here we were able to clone and sequence such chimeric messages and clearly we found splicing events taking place between cellular exons and then a, in this particular case, a cryptic splice site um, just upstream of the LTR, read-through transcription of the LTR and then the normal splicing event that takes place for HIV transcription between uh, is splice donor one and splice acceptor three to generate this TAT containing chimeric message. Um, of course, there's no point having that message there if it doesn't produce functional protein, and we believe that it does. We've, uh, in, a, in work done by Giovanna in our lab, um, she produced a lentiviral um, reporter virus that has uh, luciferase under the control of LTR and is therefore TAT responsive and transducing that into both the ACH2 and JLAT lines, you can clearly see evidence of TAT production. This measures um, TAT activity by luciferase readout. You can find mess evidence of TAT production in the unstimulated cells. Uh, to see if this happens in primary cells, we've used the uh, Lewin lab uh, model of uh, primary CD4, resting primary CD4 T cells latently infected and because we don't know where the integration site is in these cells we've therefore ad, um, used the ALU, an ADUTAT system um, to try and pick up a chimeric message uh, which we do uh, using nested PCR it's very touchy this screen um, using nested PCR um, and also uh, probing um, when, and we've confirmed that these products are in fact uh, contain, contain the TAT exon 2. Um, recently it's been shown that in the resting uh, CD4 memory uh, T cell reservoir um, there is clonal expansion and some integration sites are overrepresented above uh, other ones and so we chose a selection of these and also a few others from, another, from some other work done by um, the Frankel lab um, to see if we could pick up specifically message, these chimeric messages by maybe targeting some of these expanded uh, genes that may contain integrated HIV. And looking again at the resting CD4 T cell latency model, we were clearly able to pick up just by selecting some exons in random parts of particular genes, we were able to clearly pick up um, PCR amplification between, between uh, the cellular exon and the HIV message. And this to us shows that there is indeed these chimeric messages that are uh, being produced. And analysing these a bit further, we were able to find uh, in a similar way to the ACH2 cells that I showed just before, that there is uh, read-through transcription. There are, um, there's evidence of the LTRU3 sequence there. There's GAG sequence there. And down the bottom, you can see the series of primers I used to uh, derive these bands. Uh, we can see the uh, TAD exon 2 non-coding leader sequence and the TADX on 2 coding sequence as well as 
uh, splicing between splice daemon one and splice acceptor three. So to conclude the work we've done so far, um, during read-through transcription in lately infected T cells and primary resting CD4 cells, which is all we've been able to look at so far, um, we can find these chimeric messages, some of which contain um, cellular attack material as a chimeric message, and these appear to be generated by the usual cellular mechanisms of alternative RNA splicing. Uh, we've shown that an iris-like element in, this tat, in the TAT can lead to translation of these mRNAs in a cap-independent manner and expression of functional TAT protein. And I draw your attention to a poster being presented by George Curry in our lab on Thursday where he's characterising this iris element and looking for RNA binding proteins that might be interacting with it. Uh, because of the central role of TAT in the establishment and maintenance of latency, factors uh, affecting transcription, splicing, cytoplasmic localization or translation of TAT from chimeric RNAs will obviously have an impact on latency and whether it remains in the latent state or becomes a productively infected cell. Um, and we think that down the tracks factors could, that could target this, uh, these functions could de be developed into novel, more specific strategies to assist in activation or, and clearance or perhaps more relevantly, maybe keeping the virus from rebounding upon cessation of uh, therapy. And here again, I'd like to, you to uh, have a look at Jonathan Jacobson's poster on uh, Thursday as well, in which we've, uh, he, he presents the screening of a compound library to see if we can find specific factors that, specific compounds that bind to this iris element and regulate it. I'll just leave you with the acknowledgements from the Purcell lab that helped in this work and the Lewin lab. Thank you.